Hello, my name is Carl Lloyd Hauser. I am the senior pastor of Grace Community Church, and I am so excited that you are with us on this podcast. We also want you to get connected in a church family. If you don't have a local church, check us out at gracemontrose.org. We want to make sure that you have an opportunity to grow and connect with God. But we pray that these next 25, 30 minutes that you spend with us are powerful, that God meets you and speaks to you because He loves you so much. All right, man, I just love all the life, all the youth, the little ones running around. What a blessing it is to see God uh, touching families and the next generation. I hey, um, want to let you know that Alex and Yana Wall, so they are going to the Ukraine uh, on the 29th of this month. And so uh, they're out in the Welcome Center uh, right now. Uh, they actually have some t-shirts that they're selling for fundraisers. But um, I just want to ask you, we, we prayed for them uh, last night, but would you be, please be praying for the Walls? So um, you know that Yana grew up there and that um, we've been uh, bringing in funds uh, to care for refugees. So they're going to go over, uh, going to go into Poland and then uh, go into her hometown on the western side of Ukraine and uh, scope out the situation, look for opportunities and uh, make sure that we're investing those uh, funds as best as we can. So would you please be praying for them? It's a a pretty courageous, a somewhat dangerous mission trip uh, that they're going on. They feel called to do it. And so pray for their kids as they're here with grandma and uh, just grace and especially safety and divine appointments. God will just set up things that he wants to see happen uh, that we're ready and just stand ready to help us. So you can say hello to them after service if you want. Okay. So we're doing baptism. I can't wait. This is one of my favorite weekends of the year. And uh, we're seeing... Um, about 60 people get baptized this weekend through all our services, and it's just been, uh, it's been amazing. And so um, there's so many people getting baptized that I'm not going to talk very long. I'll just get out of the way. I've already got my Crocs. I'm going to put them in sports mode here in just a minute as I get into the water. And um, so, but I do have a few things uh, to say. And I, first of all, I want to let you know um, that if you are a follower of Jesus and you haven't been baptized or your baptism doesn't really mean that much to you, now is your chance. So um, walk in obedience and take the next step. Uh, That's what Jesus says, uh, that we come and we believe and get baptized. Repent and be baptized. They always go together. So it's kind of like part of the whole wedding ceremony and this connection with Jesus, an important part of it. So um, if you haven't been baptized, you can go through those doors at any time from now until the end of service. And we have everything you need. We have clean underwear and shirts and shorts and uh, little baptism uniforms that you can put on. So it's not too late. And if you feel that nudge, if you feel the Holy Spirit pulling, obey, because life comes out of obedience. Joy comes out of obedience. So um, if you were here for Easter Sunday, Sarah talked about uh, how amazing that was. Uh, Through our campuses, we saw in the Journey of the Cross over 3,000 people come and just be ministered to. And so I wanted to thank you for stepping up and inviting so many people and encouraging so many people. And if you come back, uh, that was your first week. We're so delighted to have you back here. This week isn't exactly like how most weeks go, um, but it's an important week, and we do this uh, a number of times a year, so we're glad that you're with us. But as I was uh, talking, if you remember, I pulled out a, uh, uh, my old high school picture, and I put that by my uh, current picture, you know, proof that I actually did grow hair at one time. And, um, you know, one of the things, I don't know, anybody have like a, a memory box, like just kind of like your old memories? So that's where I had to find it in my memory box. And I have to tell you, when I opened up my memory box and just kind of got to it, I was just like, Bleh. I don't know. It didn't make me feel excited. It didn't make me feel nostalgic. I was just like, Bleh. you know, old football tapes, like, oh, brother. And just like, there's just nothing in there for me. And I wasn't too excited about who I was back then. And, you know, I think about it even like right now. If I think back to Carl of like five years ago, you know, I think, oh, he was just, he was so young and so foolish and just didn't know. And, and then, you know, but it's funny, five years ago, if I would have thought about Carl 10 years ago, same thing, like, oh, if you just knew what I know now, you know? And uh, so what do you think is going to happen five years from today? I'm going to look back and just think, ah, come on, right? <laughs> and so as we go into these baptisms here, um, baptism is a new beginning. It's a new day. And it's tempting to think, like, okay, well, now I go into the water now I'll be good. Now I'll do it right. Now just good Carl's from here on out. Carl's that I'm proud of from here on out. But actually, baptism is actually about almost the opposite. And it's a day that we look back and a day that we remember when we aren't good. It's a day we remember when we miss it and a day when we fail. 
And a day when we just stumble and we look back and we remember our baptisms and we say, oh yeah, I'm his. I'm new, I'm a new creation. I'm not acting like it today, but I am his. And I've been made completely new. And so that's what we're going to be celebrating here. Is people coming in saying that, yes, I believe in Jesus and they're going to declare it before you. I'm going to ask them one question. I'm going to say, is Jesus your Lord? And they're going to be able to say yes. And when they do, we know that since they proclaim Jesus before you, that Jesus will proclaim them before their Father in heaven. And so this is a, a beautiful chance for them to remember that no matter what I do, no matter where I go, no matter how I blow it, I remember actually I have been born again. And I'm made new in Christ. And so I want to show you a passage here. It's Hebrews 12, and it's not a typical baptism passage. We're going to start with verse 18. And this, uh, this, I want you to understand, this is what you are not. Okay, that's what the, the author of Hebrews says. It says, you have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire to darkness, gloom, and storm. We're talking about the Israelites here. We're talking about the Old Covenant. How they came to God and then this holy mountain and holy fire and trumpet blasts or such a voice speaking words that those who heard the voice of God begged that no further word would be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. Even if an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. That sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. See, now before Jesus, before the new covenant, it was about being good. It was about, you know, I would say, I I, I would submit to you that the New Testament is a 2,000 year experiment or example in what happens when we try to reach God on our own strength and our own goodness. And when you look at all these laws and Leviticus and and all these ceremonies, it's just a constant reminder. God is saying, you can't. You can't be good enough. You can't make it. You can't earn it. And so he comes and we learn about the new covenant first in Jeremiah. Of course, it's talked about at the very beginning that Jesus will come in Genesis. And that this new covenant comes and where God does it for us because we can't do it on our own. That he reaches out and he says, okay, I'm going to come in because you guys just, you keep, you keep mucking it up. You can't do it and you need my help. And he comes and gives us the strength to find it. But before it was always trying and there's fire and darkness and gloom and it's just not working. But I have such good news for you because that's not what it is for you. And that's not what it is for those who are getting baptized today. See, you have come to Mount Zion, verse 22, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. And you have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men. Look at that, righteous men made perfect. Righteous people made perfect to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See, this is what they're being baptized in today. If you are a follower of Jesus, this is what you have stepped into. Thousands and thousands in joyful assembly before God. The firstborn being born again. To have a connection and a walk and a relationship with him. That your name, did you see that? That your name is written in the book of heaven. And that you are righteous men and women made perfect in him. That's what we're coming into. That's what our baptism reminds us of. And see, before, we have the blood of Abel. See, it was all, before this moment, it was, that was the only word that we had. That was the final word. Now, if you know the story, it's in Genesis 4. Cain killed his brother Abel. And we see in Genesis, I think it's 4.10, it says, what have you done? Your, your, your brother's blood is crying out from the ground, God says. And so what is the, that blood of Abel? See, it's a cry for justice, and it's a cry for payment, and a cry for punishment. And the word that we have before Christ, the word that it speaks, is that payment is demanded. It has to be dealt with. But then we see that there's a better word, that there's a different word for us. And it's the blood of Jesus. And it's not that payment is demanded, it is that payment has been received. That's taken care of. And he covered your sin and he covered my sin. And his blood speaks a different word for us. It speaks forgiveness instead of shame. It speaks restoration instead of isolation. It speaks salvation instead of separation. It speaks connection with God now. We walk hand, we walk hand in hand with God because of what Jesus has done. See, baptism, it's step two in this amazing work that God has done. 
where we get saved in Christ and then we move in obedience and we grow closer and closer and closer with him and we come to know him and we fall deeply in love with him. And see, this blood of Jesus, it even speaks to my box of memories and it transforms what it means. Because if I could go back and talk to that guy, I would say, Carl, don't be a punk, right? See, but Jesus, his word, his blood, it says, Carl, there's grace and mercy even for your punkiness. It's covered. We're in him. We're clean. The word of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, there's grace for all your shame. And there's mercy for 30 years ago. And there's mercy for five years ago. And there's mercy for today. And there's mercy for tomorrow. And that's what we're celebrating. No matter how they stumble after this day, that they remember this day that I went into the water and I came up and I'm a new creation in Christ and I belong to Christ. And every time, if you are a follower of Jesus, every time you are embarrassed or ashamed or you think of that season, like, uh, or you think of your actions or you think of your failure, don't shake your head. Don't, don't be ashamed anymore. Rejoice and know that the blood of Jesus speaks a better word over it. That he makes you new and he makes you whole. And your baptism is just a reminder that I'm not the same person I was. And that even those failures now in Christ are just proclamations of his grace, his mercy. It's a declaration that I am his and I will be his forever. So for those of you who are not getting baptized, I have two things that I want to ask you to do. One is for every person that's here that comes in to get baptized today, would you just pray for them? As they come, pray that they move forward and they keep walking with God and just ask however God would lead you to pray. Just be praying and interceding for their walk because this is an important moment in their life and where they're going. And then the second thing I want you to do is remember your baptism. I remember mine. It was almost 30 years ago. And remember what it says and remember what it means and remember the better word that it brings. That even in the midst of your brokenness, you are new. That you are part of the firstborn. You're gathered with thousands and thousands in this joyful assembly. That your name is written in the book of life. And not that you're really good now, but that you actually are made perfect in him, by him. That Jesus' blood makes you perfect because his sacrifice is perfect. So I think we should get to it and let's get baptizing here and celebrating what God is doing, okay? Thank you so much for being with us. I hope that God spoke to you. We would love to follow up and care for you any way that we can. So come visit us at gracemontrose.org. Say hello. Let us know what we can do to help you grow in him. God bless you. 